Guys, welcome back. And you already know, we've got another book review for you today. And this one, you definitely don't want to miss. So let's get into it. Now, the book we're reviewing today is The Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler. Now, before we get into it, I just want to give you guys a little bit of context. I read this book earlier this year in February, and I gotta say, man, it's definitely one of my favorites. And right now, I might even say it's definitely in my top five. And something for you guys as well. I actually started this book on my Kindle, and recently I actually bought the physical copy of the book. So that's how good it is. You know, I'm planning on reading it again at some point, so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna keep that copy with me. When I buy a physical copy of the book, it's because I'm actually gonna try and use it. Now, here's a quick summary of the book. The book is about what it takes to be great, to reach peak human performance levels, to learn anything from a neurobiological perspective. The book explains how the human brain works in order to reach optimal states for motivation and learning. And on top of this, it gives you like the best practices for learning, motivation, creativity and flow. Some of my feelings and impressions about the book. So what makes this book really great? Well, first of all, it's quite extensive and thorough in its content around learning and the best ways to achieve goals. Secondly, it's really made me more curious about the human mind in general and it's things that we don't always think about. That human capabilities are really limitless and I truly believe that. And that comes down to one thing and that's the human brain. There's been huge breakthroughs when it comes to understanding the human brain over the last decade or so, but yet there's still so much that we don't fully understand. Overall, there's a lot of useful information in this book and even better that there's a summary at the end where you can basically pick out ideas or habits that you want to start working on. So if I haven't said it already, do yourself a favor and get the book. Like, get it right now. I'll wait for you. Okay, that should be enough time. Let's continue. Who should read this book? This is a book for anyone who's interested in the human mind, brain, and how it operates, especially in learning, attaining goals and achievements. This is also for anyone who wants ideas on how to reach peak human performance in any area that they're pursuing. So if you are driven, motivated, and you want ideas on how to perform more efficiently and to the best of your human capabilities, then this is the book for you. The impact the book has had on me. What I found is that the book mainly reconfirmed a lot of things that I've experienced and learned over the years. And it also helped me make sense of why I may have been in certain mental and psychological states. A lot of what I've learned from the book are things that I'm working on and still continue to work on. But it's put in a way that's easy to understand and helped me make sense of my own experiences so far. It's definitely made me more aware of how optimizing my brain for peak human performance is very important as a way to achieve my own personal goals. And the other thing I found from reading the book is that it's made me more optimistic about my current pathway and how far I can take or push myself mentally and physically. Some of my favorite quotes from the book. Guys, I really want you to understand something. I really struggled here. I really struggled to narrow down this part of the video. There was just some quotes I just couldn't leave out. So it's a little longer than usual, but these might get you guys thinking a little bit and just stimulate your mind. The best of the best will often head in the direction that scares them most. Why? Once again, focus and flow. Going in the direction that scares you most amplifies attention and this translates into flow. The boost in performance the state provides then helps us push through our fears and rise to these bigger challenges. But the even larger lift comes afterwards with the discovery that our real potential lies on the other side of our greatest fears. By confronting fear, we are expanding capacity. Teaching ourselves to remain psychologically stable and in control even in situations that feel unstable and uncontrollable. The best way to train up physical and emotional weaknesses is head on, but slowly. Don't expect you'll solve these problems in a week or two. Old habits die hard. Learn to love slow progress. Learn to forgive yourself for the inevitable backsliding. The floundering is what you're after. It's where slow hunches really emerge. If you suddenly find yourself with more questions than answers, well, 
That's how it's supposed to work. You've now managed to stumble into the true blank spots on the map. And if you've done this right, because you've followed your curiosity to get into these spots, suddenly you're stuck with burning questions that no one can answer. So you'll end up trying to find those answers yourself. Out of this frustration, that's where real learning actually begins. Seek out experts who disagree with the experts with whom you've already spoken. When you get to the spot where everything you thought you knew was actually wrong, then you're in the right place. Gratitude, mindfulness, exercise and sleep are non-negotiables for sustained peak performance. The non-negotiable part is key. When life gets complicated, these four practices are typically what we remove from our schedule. But the research shows this is the last choice we should make. Instead, lean into these practices as they're how you get creativity needed to entangle the complicated. Along similar lines, being in small cramped spaces has the opposite effect. It shrinks attention, getting us to focus on parts and not the whole. So in practical terms, crawl out from under your desk, go outside, look around, repeat as needed. When you're in struggle, use the triggers to your advantage. Never struggle outside the challenge skills sweet spot without clear goals or structures in place to provide immediate feedback. If you're really stuck, deploy novelty, complexity and unpredictability, meaning go struggle somewhere new and novel. Make sure that the pattern recognition system is well stocked and that you're not blocking creativity with a bad mood. And if you are, deploy gratitude, mindfulness, exercise, sleep, and so on to reset your mood. Non-optimal arousal. This is another reason we've trained up motivation. If you don't have the energy to fight, you can't get into flow. But the same thing holds true once in flow. If you don't have the energy to sustain that fight, you succumb to fatigue and won't get to play in the zone for long. This is also why nutrition, active recovery, sleep hygiene, and regular exercise matters. All give you the best chance of optimal arousal in every situation. And that's the book review done. That's The Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler. If you made it this far, you know how much I appreciate you. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts about the book or the quotes that I provided. So make sure you comment down below and let me know what you think of the video. You know, we're trying to improve on a weekly basis here, so I'm open to ideas and suggestions. Remember to leave a like and make sure you subscribe for more videos and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.